Welcome back to Killing All Bosses in Elden Ring. Today we are going through Ohio. Screw the rules. We've done this before. Let's just jump into it. We killed Anastasia. Uh, she usually gives me a lot of trouble, but uh, this time our cold spells carried us. I honestly hate her. I'm very excited to say. We killed another Erd Tree avatar. It took like six tries, which is honestly kind of pathetic. It took that many. Not a great start to the video. We die in like two hits from this thing. Are we made out of paper mache now? What is this scaling? For like the final attempt that we won, the boss just kind of moonwalk and let itself get hit. They really got to make more unique versions of this thing. I'm kind of getting sick of it. Okay, speaking of unique bosses, I might get flamed for this, but the Erd Tree Burial Watchdog duo fight was an actual entertaining fight that I liked. It's a repeat of two separate Erdtree Burial Watchdogs, which in the past I've kind of said fighting these watchdogs was boring, but there being two actually made this fight fun. I, my logic's weird. I mean, I died a couple of times for this. We got the Mad Pumpkin Head Spirit Ash for some reason. Um, later on, it, it'll be explained why this is weird. I should really make like a checklist for what makes a good boss in my opinion, because I feel like I should be doing that for this. Honestly, Kaelid is really scary. The red sky, crazy creatures, falling stars. I know I made the joke earlier, but it really does remind me of Ohio. Okay, we fought Radon early. This was for a special reason. I need to kill the Crucible Knight in Misbegotten, but because I've already been to Altus, the Radon Festival started. So we need to kill him to get to the two bosses. So uh, let's get into that fight. Champions, welcome. The stars of a aligned. The festival is nigh! General Radan, mightiest demigod of the Shattering, awaits you! Champions, prepare for battle! Defeat the general, claim glory, and grab that great rune! A celebration of war! The Radan Festival! I beat him first try. Barely. The girl that you summon, the maiden that heals you, like that healing is actually nothing. And because of that, we got to kill the Crucible Knight and Misbegotten. Uh, the Crucible Knight is a lot scarier than the Misbegotten. It's a duo fight. I really like this. Man, I'm loving the duo fights for some reason. The Crucible Knight spawns after the Misbegotten does, so we need to quickly kill the Misbegotten so we don't have to deal with both at once. Uh, the, this fight was tough, and the Crucible Knight, as always, gave me trouble. These things are becoming like my sworn enemy. Uh, and next time I see one, if it's like not like an actual boss I need to kill for the video, I am running. Okay, now actually, I think my favorite thing in Kaelid, no joke, is the War Dead Catacombs. Did you know that there was catacombs in Radon's arena? Well, I didn't. Like, okay, so, um, as we know, Melania and Radon fought each other, and their soldiers also fought each other, but all of them died because Melania got a little trigger-happy with the Kaelid nuke. Back to the main point, they have beef after dying. The Radon and Melania soldiers are fighting each other even though they're both dead. This is, like, generational beef. Um, well, we got destroyed and jumped by the Putrid Tree Spirit shortly after making our way through the catacombs. What the fuck is that damage? We finally had to upgrade our spirit. Thanks, Roderica, baby girl. For the, uh, Tree Spirit, we killed it with Bleed from the Pumpkin Head and stunned it with Meteorites and dealt most of our damage through procking, um, Frostbite. We really had to use everything to beat this guy. This and, like, the first dungeon in the game, I think I just hate Tree Spirits. I don't know if there's another main boss of this guy in the game, but I'm really hoping there is, and I do not want to fight that thing. 
More duel fights. Okay, we used the pumpkin head against the duel pumpkin head boss. Why did the pumpkin head spirit drop from the Erd Tree Burial Watchdogs instead of from the pumpkin head boss? When I was like done reading the script, I had to go to the wiki and check because that made zero sense to me. Anyways, I thought the meteorites would be good for this because it could hit both, but nope, these guys move way too fast. Anyways, uh, I killed them, yeah. Commander Niall, wait, Commander O'Neill, uh, he took a couple of tries. He honestly wasn't too bad though. His minions made it pretty tough because I couldn't really get close to him without someone shooting or hitting me, but Commander O'Neill fell just like his minions did. There's another magma worm, worm, fi worm, wire, can someone please tell me how to pronounce that? Um, it's a lesser version of the one we fought to get to Altus. This was super cathartic as I used to struggle on it so much in my past. We stunlocked this thing into oblivion and got the Moon Veil, which I sadly won't be using. While we were at it, we started Millicent's quest, because I've never started the- Oh. Jeez. Hey, baby girl. Other half of the Dectus Medallion. Since we started Millicent's quest, we can get Night Shard and Night's Maiden Mist from this weird old guy. Night Maiden's Mist is one of our strongest spells. It's like poison, and considering there are no poison or Scarlet Rot spells, it's the best we got. Considering we're in Kaled, which is basically hell, we need to harness the power of the galaxies and get the Meteorite Staff and Rock Sling. Now, weirdly enough, the Staff can't be leveled up at all using any Smithing Stones, but for this stage of the game, it's really good, and in fact, like, better than anything else we have. Rock Sling is also very good, you just kind of, like, throw, like, two or three meteorites at your enemy. It does decent damage, but where it really shines is how good it is at breaking enemies' poise so you can backstab them or crit them. Um, um, I kind of forgot to talk about this, but the Divine Tower was extremely confusing to navigate, and the Godskin Apostle skinned us alive. I had to come back here later once I got the meteorite staff and rock sling, because the boss was actually how I spent like four hours fighting this thing because I was extremely underleveled. And before you say anything, yes, it was a skill issue. Being able to break his poise and deal critical hits was literally a lifesaver, but even with our newfound advantage, he still beat us up plenty of times. I'm just glad we're never gonna have to deal with him ever again. The Frenzied Duelist took like three tries. I was trying to test out our new spells and weapons, so that got me killed a lot of the time as I didn't know how they were. Uh, we also encountered the Mr. Munchkin Men, which is, which is like way more important than the boss. The Decaying, Isaiks. How do you say this? Um, the dragon afflicted with scarlet rot. Well, I guess all of the dragons here are like afflicted with scarlet rot, but this one is like the main one. It took two tries for us to kill. Ever since the Liernia episode with the meteorites, I just learned how powerful poise is. Um, I, I know I said about how much I love scarlet rot, but when it's used on me, no. Cemetery shade. Knight's cavalry obliterated as per usual. Man, these guys are super easy now. Oh look, it's a deathbird. The duo clean rot knights, the people who I was fearing about in the Lyernia episode, weren't too bad? What? Okay, the rot cave sucked, and I instantly got hit with scarlet rot when I entered the fight. Despite that, I managed to beat them. My summon probably could have soloed it. Battle mage Hughes. I barely tried. We got a summon from beating him, but like, I really don't want to use this summon if it's anything like the actual boss it comes from. Like, look at this man. There's also the Falling Star Beast, which, number one, incredible boss design, just like, in pure aesthetic alone, is cool. I love physical spells, yippee, stun locking, and actually doing damage. Screw the Morning Star. We got fucking magic. We got a Somberstone Smithing Bell. Now onto a boss that I was actually excited to fight because I've never beat it before. Did you know that I never figured out the Magic City puzzle? I just didn't know you had to, like, activate or deactivate the torches. Yeah, that's fun. The Nox Sword Stress and the Nox Priest were very fun, but weak. And this is one of the bosses where I actually wish they were stronger. Like, their design is really cool. They have, like, a sword whip weapon, which is amazing, and they just kind of got destroyed. I got lost trying to find them, too. I mean, I had to, like, look up the tutorial. It was quite sad, honestly. Guys, I'm sorry. We, we had to kill Grail. Grail is this big dragon that you can just bleed to death and it can't even fight back. We needed to kill everything in Limgrave first, and so killing it didn't even like- we, we got to level up like twice, so now I just kind of feel bad for beating up a defenseless old dragon. Anyways, the putrid avat- Remember earlier when I said that they should make different versions of these things? No, I changed my mind. Fuck that. 
Scarlet Rod made this fight difficult as hell, and its HP bar was through the roof, and I kept getting stuck on the terrain, which caused me to get destroyed. I fucking hate this guy. I said the Knight's Cavalry was easy. I don't know what they did to this Knight's Cavalry on the bridge. I don't know what they fed him. I don't know how much he was being paid, but this was like one of the toughest boss fights up until this point in terms of like just the amount of fear I felt fighting it. it maybe it was something with its AI, but it, it was not acting. It was way more aggressive than every single Knight's Cavalry I've ever thought fought before. I kind of ended up cheesing it, unfortunately. Like, okay, it, it was a scary fight. It was a scary fight. I had to. And I was starting to go insane. Grail was defeated pretty easily. Not Grail. Grail. Uh, we stun locked the dragon into hell, which I think might just be the same thing for every single dragon. Grail was extremely hard to dodge as it stayed on the bridge and then shot flames across the bridge. And because we're on a bridge, it's hard to dodge the flames. Okay, now, I, I've been, like, enjoying the duo fights so far. Uh, that, that ends here with, the with like, both Beastmen of Faramazula. Fuck this fight. Like, this is just act- Okay, like, I like fights that are, like, fun and difficult, but not impossible. I- n when I encounter- there, There's an example later in this video about a good mix between being hard, difficult, and fun. But this fight is just bullshit. Okay, so there, there, there's two of them, right? One of them is like the first beast man we fought with the large sword that like swings at us every fucking three seconds and is super aggressive. And like that one on its own is tricky, but like fun to fight. But then there's another one which throws projectiles that track you. And the other one is constantly rushing you. I, I don't even get to hit one without the other obliterating me. And by the way, the one that throws projectiles throws two projectiles. So if you're trying to beat up the sword guy, you can get hit once and get stunned by the throwing one, get hit again by the sword guy, then again by the projectile guy in the span of like four seconds to stunlock you into death. So it's just like, what am I supposed to do here? Even if I have a summon, the aggro is insane. Anyways, um, 10 out of 10 fight, best fight in the game. Um, Miyazaki's a genius, great job. Okay, we're just getting to the part of the video where I'm getting upset. Because we have another bell-bearing hunter. It's the same fight, right? You know, he has his infinite range as normal, and he has 10,000 HP. 10,000. Like, what? Excuse me? Or am I am I playing the same game? Why do you have 10,000 HP? I, I'm not a fan. I was not enjoying it. Oh, don't worry. We poisoned him to death. Chemical Warfare is a fun one. Uh, the Celia Crystal Tunnel was cool. Okay, actually, actually, no, no. This, th this was cool. A trio boss fight is crazy. I, I guess there's like technically like maybe two or three more trio boss fights in the game, but they're so rare and I didn't know this boss existed that when I came across it, I was like literally li like, I was, I was surprised. I was like, is there supposed to be three of them? It, it was cool. I got Scarlet Rot pretty fast, but luckily my summon was tanky enough to carry me through it. I mean, I was like running for my life for most of the fight, but my summon did great. I, I think this fight's a cool concept. I was stressing so much trying to dodge and not get my ass kicked. Um, this one's, this one's a cool fight. 10 Gideons out of Ofnir. Speaking of Gideon, I don't really know what to do, so let's go talk to him. Hey Gideon, what's left to kill? Witless Tarnished, you just seek to kill everything instead of going for the Elden Ring? If you must know, the Blackblade Kindred is the only thing left for you to carelessly slaughter. Oh, okay, cool. Thanks, Boomer. What? We defeated the Black Blade Kindred, one of the scarier bosses, in my opinion, at least in terms of design. He uses a cool black fire move, which might be destined to death, but that's spoilers. Um, I liked this boss. It was, like, pretty tough. He did insane damage, but it didn't feel impossible. This is what- this is the type of fight I meant where, like, I feel- I like it having a good balance between being difficult and being fun. It kept switching weapons, which was, which was really cool. Like the animation of taking the battle off, axe off, and it, it's cool. I think it's a good boss to end the video with. But what now? Um, Gideon, where? Where do I go? Ah, well you should head to Atlas. There lies Lyndal, the capital, along with the Erd Tree. Before entering, I recommend going after Millennia. Rikard, Mog, and Morgoth. They have the remaining pieces of the Elden Ring. Cool. So go kill them and then become Elden Lord. Got it. Also, for the love of Marika, focus on defeating them. You'll senselessly waste time killing everything. Bye, Gideon. Damn it. I don't, why do I even bother with that puny?